Now, can everybody hear me without the mic? Fine, because I'll talk like this. I'm, I'm better than having one hand on the mic, and because I wander as I talk anyway. Um, Want to welcome you uh, to the fourth and final part of this series. And oh, there's Jeremy. Um, <laughs> Jeremy's, Jeremy's going to be misquoting me uh, throughout the session today on Twitter, so don't follow him. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about Google Plus uh, here for the uh, Chamber series. Uh, let me ask, start off with a question. How many of you already have set up your Google Plus account? Those of you who have it set up, how many of you are using it? All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's a pretty good start. By the way, the hashtag to use today, as a reminder, it's the same hashtag that's been used throughout the series. If you're tweeting uh, as we go and want to send out those pearls of wisdom, uh, it is SMS12. And hashtags also work on Google+, Plus. by the way. If you're doing Google+, Plus on your laptop or your mobile, you can also use that hashtag there. Start off real quick, I'll tell you about uh, Ackerman PR, where I work. Uh, I am the digital strategies manager there, started there about two years ago. Uh, what I do, as, as was said, is, is help businesses figure out the best way to use all these fun new digital tools in their business communications needs. Uh, Ackerman, of course, is a full service integrated uh, marketing and communications firm. Uh, we are actually this year celebrating our 30th year. We are the oldest PR firm in Knoxville, started during the 1982 World's Fair, which that means, as you figured out quickly, the World's Fair was also 30 years ago to help you feel a little old, uh, if you want to know that part. We uh, work with national, regional, and local clients uh, throughout uh, the area. And if you want to find us online, the web address is simple enough, ackermanpr.com. For me, uh, just a way of background, as was mentioned, I do have background work in radio, print, and in a nonprofit public relations before I started working at Ackerman PR. I am a full-time geek, as uh, my bride will attest. She's here to learn, because apparently I won't teach her for free. Uh, she had to pay for the session as well. And, uh, but we're, she's here, but she will attest to it that I am a, a full-time geek. I enjoy playing with this. My first computer uh, was in 1984, a Timex 2K Sinclair uh, computer. 2K referred to how much memory it held on the hard drive. I get text messages now that could not handle the 2K, uh, the, that would crash that little computer. Uh, but I've been playing online and, and experimenting with these tools since then. I, I would tell you my AOL screen name, but it would embarrass me, so we'll skip right on. Uh, <laughs> but I've enjoyed working with you know, bulletin boards, AOL, and then on into what we now call digital media. Uh, if you want to read the full profile, a history of me, uh, there's the Google Plus address for my profile. Uh, it's actually a, not an official Google Plus shortener There's a, a, that you can go to, uh, uh, gplus.to, and create a shortened address, personalized. I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but if you need to know it, it's gplus.to slash Shane Ryan, and that's how you find my profile. We're going to dive in and talk at the beginning of the session here about Google Plus, a little about what it is, how it got started, what's going on. Uh, I recognize that a lot of you are not yet using it a lot or are still curious about what's going on with this, so I really wanted to save some time at the end to make this more of a uh, live demonstration kind of time, just to let you see some of these tools at work and get a feeling and understanding of what's happening with Google Plus and what's making it, to me at least, such a fun and exciting kind of uh, new tool to have. Uh, you, so we'll have a little history here. We'll start off with the brief history of the brief history of Google+. Uh, as you may not know, Google+, Plus is only about seven months old uh, compared to all the other social networks. This is the baby. Uh, it's only seven months old. Then we'll kind of do a little overview of the services, the tools that are on there, a little look at even some screenshots of some of the pages, how it works, get an idea of the architecture of the site. Talk a little bit about why I think Google Plus has an excellent case to be made on its behalf as a business communications tool. And then we'll just dive right in and do a little live demonstration work. So that's how we're going to kind of do this. And by the way, um, I can talk like a wind-up doll. If you have the need to ask a question, feel free, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will just chatter. Uh, and, and, and go from there. So don't, uh, don't wait for me to take a breath necessarily to get the question in. Just raise your hand, let me know, and I'm happy to stop and, and take care of that. We'll also take some time for Q&A at the end as well. So for our brief history of Google+, Plus, uh, I would point out that Google+, Plus actually officially launched on June 28th last year uh, as an invitation-only platform. You had to have an invite to get in. I was excited because I was able to, I stayed up truly, geeky me, stayed up all night on the 28th 
talking to everybody I knew on Twitter, do you have an invitation? Until actually I found one, I will give her a shout out. Her name is Sarah Lang, and she lives in Chicago. Uh, I knew her on Twitter entirely. She works for the Obama re-election social media team, and she sent me an invitation, and she is why I'm on Google+. Plus. So thank you, Sarah. Uh, so she got me on, so on day two, on June 29th, I was able to set up my account and start playing with, with this. Notable, I think, is that Google Plus debuted on day one with a mobile app. It downloaded automatically. I have a droid. Uh, it downloaded w automatically. Once I signed up online, I had a download happening on my phone. My mobile app was ready to rock and roll, set up for me with all the profile information already done, ready to go. Because what is interesting about Google Plus is that they recognize right away that the future of social is going to be also based in mobile. And uh, Jeremy had talked about that actually in the very first session this year about the trends to look for. Mobile is always the trend of the year. Uh, but Google also recognized that and began to integrate immediately with mobile and mobile capabilities. By July 14, 10 million accounts had been activated on Google+. That sounds like a lot, but as everybody in the tech media like to point out right away, Facebook has 800 million accounts, so Google has a way to go. Uh, just two weeks into it though, the, the growth rate was pretty impressive considering the invitations were at that point shut off because they had so many, Google was afraid of what it was going to do to the servers. Then an interesting thing happened, a week later, Google actually found that people were setting up accounts for their businesses. They weren't setting them up as Shane Ryan, they were setting them up as a business name or under some pseudonym because that's what, how people like to do on Facebook as well, they'll use pseudonyms. Google began a purge a week later, said that's not what we intend for this to do. We're going to create a special platform for businesses and for people who want to use pseudonyms uh, online, but this isn't the time. We want people to interact in these early days as individuals identifiable. This caused some controversy with some people who would prefer not to be identifiable online, uh, but uh, the purge began and they didn't play any favorites. Uh, PBS was taken off, they had a PBS account, NPR was taken off, a Ford Motor Company, Scott Monty had set up a Ford Motor account, it was shut down. Uh, they said, please hold on, wait, we want to take your input and get a sense of how we think you could best use it. How would you like to use this as a business, but let's let people build this platform first, which I think is probably always a pretty good idea. Uh, invitation period ended September 20 uh, the, of last year and then they began finally launching uh, integration with Google Apps uh, October 27. How many of you use Google Apps with your business that you have? In, yeah. So that was a frustrating time from June to October 27 when you could not integrate your Google Apps account, all your, your cloud uh, programs, your, your, your websites and all these things that are tied to that. They finally got around doing that. What's interesting and we'll talk about is that Google is really building this in front of us as we watch. Uh, they, they decided that the, the best possible way to do this is let's put out there what we can, let's throw it out, let people test it, let them tell us what they would like to see happen instead and we'll mend this as we go. Uh, so this, the idea that it came out as a finished product is not the case at all. Actually they decided purposely to send this out as beta and we are the guinea pigs. We get to work with this. Other new features that operated in October also that, are, that we'll talk about as we get into the live demo included Ripples, which I think is a fascinating visual way of seeing and finding out who your influencers are online. It's a, it's, uh, it's a different way than you'll ever see, I think, on any other network. It's really a lot of fun. They also introduced a What's Hot feature so you can start to find and discover content a little more easily. And they bought Picnic, which is a popular photo uh, uh, editing site uh, and they bought it and integrated it into Google Plus so that you now had an ability to, to edit photos as you uploaded them to Google Plus right away and, and do what you, uh, because Google Plus it turned out very early, very popular with photographers. It wasn't until November that they finally did launch the new version of brand pages, which is where businesses were finally able to get in there and set up their pages. And since then, everybody's still kind of experimenting, trying to figure out a little about what to do here, and that's a little what we'll be talking about uh, as well as what's going on. And a key thing to point out too, and I mentioned this actually when Jeremy was speaking, this I think happened, was Search Plus Your World uh, debuted on January 10 uh, of this year. Search Plus Your World is a, radical change to how Google's search engine is going to work in the future. Uh, it's based on the concept, and we'll discuss this a little bit later, of social search. 
of how your social networks recommend and feed information to the search engine for you to get information. And we'll talk about that. Jeremy touched on that at the very beginning of the series. Uh, if you've been all the way through, you heard him talk about social search and the power of social, social search. Ongoing, Google, if you've noticed, has been changing the interface design of all of their properties. YouTube, <coughs> Gmail, calendars, everything's changing. The idea is everything is streamlining to a single look. Because what Google Plus is really doing is tying together all of Google's tools into a single suite of tools that are no longer going to be segregated out from each other. They're going to talk to each other, so in order to do that, they also want them to look like each other so that you would be able to operate them more easily. Some other notable features have been added since the launch. The users demanded hashtag support. Hashtags are so popular on Twitter, this is a great way to find and track information, to search for information. Google did actually by October begin to add hashtag support and even now has hashtag auto completion. So as you start to type a hashtag, it sees what hashtags are currently in use that are starting that way, just like when you do a Google search, and it fills in the options for you. Did you mean this hashtag? So there's no guessing a lot of times now of what, who's using what anymore. Mobile access to Hangouts. Hangouts are uh, the video conferencing tool available on the desktop version of uh, Google Plus and they have just recently introduced the ability for you now to use your phone and join in on those f video conferences if you're using a phone with a front-facing camera and it's uh, a certain version of Honeycomb on the Android system, so it's still phasing in. I don't even know if all the iPhones can get in on it. Can you get in on iPhone now? I know there was some talk, okay, great. So iPhones can get in uh, now. There was a little lag. If you'll notice sometimes there's a little bit of a fun scuffle between Google and Apple sometimes. Uh, that's, the new, uh, that's the new Apple versus Windows kind of world. It's Apple versus Google now. And so Google sometimes will release things for Android and make Apple wait for a few days uh, for things happening. Live Hangouts, also a fun new product. Again, you have the opportunity to do video conferencing, but it was limited to the people that were in the, the conference. With Live Hangouts, you now have the opportunity to broadcast those, so people can actually tune in and watch the Hangout just like they're watching a YouTube video uh, and watch the live action. It also is being recorded, and then you can upload that to your YouTube channel. Yesterday, one of the most famous of the Live Hangouts took place, the President Obama participated in one. Uh, and he hosted, he had five citizens who participated in a live hangout with him and the rest of the world was able to join me in crashing YouTube watching this uh, as we all tuned in to watch the president talk and answer questions from these folks. Uh, so that's an interesting, interesting new tool. I think it's got some fantastic business opportunities if you're into things like doing product launches or even some focus group studies with folks. So we'll talk about that. You can also in video, use video in your status update now. Google is very oriented to video, to photos, to imagery. Uh, and video in your status update is, is an interesting new tool. It's not really surprisingly being used a lot as far as I've been watching with people in my stream. Uh, I've uploaded a couple of times myself, but it's just, uh, the idea is that you can rather than type out a lengthy message, film yourself with the camera on your laptop or your phone, talk about what it is you wanted to say in your status update, <coughs> upload it right away as your status update. Uh, it's an interesting feature. I think it has some great potential. It's been surprisingly slow to be adopted at this point, uh, but I think it's gone, coming a long way. And recently there's been a lot of uh, uh, discussion about what Google is doing with their privacy controls. Uh, you may have received, if you're like me and you have different accounts, you've probably received like three or four emails, a couple of pop-ups, and some text messages along the way that says Google is changing their privacy controls. And what they're doing is they are, because of all the different products they own, which is about 60 different products, each of those products had its own set of privacy rules. And Google, uh, actually following a, a request for some time within Congress and, and privacy rights groups, and have been saying, we want all these companies to have these multiples to try to consolidate. So Google actually did. And so this week they began rolling out the fact that they are consolidating all of their privacy controls so that the same privacy standard for Google Plus applies to YouTube, applies to Gmail, applies to Calendar, applies to anything else you're using. It's the same policy. What's causing the heartache for everybody is, uh, quite honestly, uh, that uh, people are now concerned that Google will track what you're doing. They always have. Uh, <laughs> I think it's worth noting they have always have tracked what you're doing between all those accounts. It's just they had different standards for how they 
shared that information with and who they shared it with. This lets you see in one place, no longer are you tracking down 60 different accounts, you're now saying this is the standard that I expect Google to follow. Uh, they are getting called on the carpet in Washington about this, interestingly enough, uh, but their response is we're doing exactly what you asked us to do. Uh, we're telling you what we did and we're telling you how to find the information and so it'll be interesting to see how this rolls on through the summer. Uh, I think this also is a challenge to Facebook and others to put their privacy standards more up front to people and get the discussion going. <coughs> Features that we expect to see added based on conversations we're seeing on Google Plus with uh, Google Plus by the way the community managers at Google uh, who created this are very active there and they'll get on and talk about things that are happening, feedback they're getting from, from the users, uh, discussions they're having in meetings and what changes they're going to make. They'll, they'll post videos on a regular basis saying hey here's what we're getting ready to roll out and so what you expect to see by the way, I always, you never see Zuckerberg do that. Uh, but you, know, you always get a chance to see this and hear what they're talking about. And so based on that, we know some things that are on the way. One is an integration with Google Places. Uh, they have been hinting at that for some time. They did some integration with Google Maps already. Google Places, how many of you have for your business a Google Places uh, page? All right, this is going, oh, I'm sorry, Google Places, if you don't use it, it's basically, it's, the, uh, it's, a, it's a local search where if you search and you find, you, you do a search uh, for, you know, taco stand, uh, Senor Taco. You're looking for Senor Taco and you go and you find Senor Taco search results and if they have a Google Places account, then you'll see on the top of the search results the little <coughs> map showing where Google Senior Taco is and click here for more information and it takes you to a Google Places page, breaks it down for you, information, website links, hours, reviews, people have uploaded pictures, that sort of thing. So it, it, but it kind of has lived in its own little world. Uh, this is going to bring it into Google Plus uh, and I think it's going to make an interesting change to local marketing uh, because if Google Plus brings in places, brings in maps, they're already bringing in Google Earth, then what you're going to see is, I think, a place where Google Plus kind of exists as a combination of things, including uh, a daily deal possibility, a Foursquare type service. Uh, all these things can be blended into uh, Google Plus. Google calendars and events are supposedly one of the next things online. Uh, if you start blending that into Google Plus, then you now have the ability to invite your customers to special events to post community calendars, uh, to do these sorts of things, to tie things together. If you are a nonprofit and you want to get your volunteers all organized around different events and getting everybody signed up for their, what they need to do, you can take your Google Calendar that you may be using for that now, load it right up to your nonprofit's page for everybody to see and interact with. If they're also given access to that, they can upload their information, make their reservations, uh, whatever it is they need to do. So this is, I think, an interesting also new piece of the puzzle that should be by what I'd heard this year uh, pretty soon happening. Full integration with Blogger, as you know, may or may not know, Google owns blogger.com. Uh, they have begun fa phasing in some limited integration with Blogger right now. For instance, you can, if you connect your Blogger account with your Google Plus account, <coughs> You can upload automatically your blog post to Google Plus or link to it automatically. There will be some more of that going on where essentially what's going to happen in the future is you can write on Google Plus and it will post to your blog or the other way around. So that the, the lines are going to, as you can see, the lines are going to start disappearing pretty quick. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a pretty robust uh, application of a whole lot of different tools that can be used to get your message out. Did want to say a quick opinion about the value of failure. Google Plus famously, uh, about a year or two ago, launched Wave. And I was one of three people who said, I think I'll try that. Uh, Google, Wave was well intended but uh, horribly uh, d designed, even by Google's standards. It, it was difficult to understand, the interface wasn't intuitive, no one quite figured out. All they knew is that Google Wave promised to reinvent email. And everybody said email wasn't broken. Uh, <laughs> we don't understand this. And it was supposed to integrate Google Documents and you know, PowerPoint type sharing, all these things you could do live within the documents. Uh, no one understood it. No one knew how to work it. Everybody kind of walked away from it very quickly. Uh, Google Buzz was the other one. It was Google's answer to Twitter. 
Uh, Google decided they would do their own version of Twitter. Uh, they introduced it. No one was really sure again how to use it, why to use it. They were mad about some privacy issues when Google actually started signing you up to follow people automatically on Buzz if you had also emailed that person at some point through your Gmail account. And this caused all kinds of heartache for people. Uh, and all of your Buzz posts were public right away. There was no sh turning off or, or filtering at that point. So it was causing some problems for people. The, uh, those died mercifully. Uh, Wave last year, Buzz, actually this year just recently was, was, was officially retired. Uh, but what's interesting about those is that those tools, pieces of the DNA of both of those tools you will see in Google+. Plus. Uh, you will recognize if you use them for a little while, you'll see how they took and learned from their failure and move that into, I think, a more successful tool with Google+. Dodgeball, incidentally, if, I don't know if anybody knows, does anybody know what Dodgeball is? Dodgeball was the original Foursquare. The creator of Foursquare started with a company called Dodgeball and Google bought it and then had no idea what to do with it. Uh, and it eventually died and then he left Google and founded another company, but since the Dodgeball name was taken, he took his next favorite game, Foursquare, and that's how that started. But Dodgeball was another one of those situations where they took something, they tried to figure out how to use it, they weren't working at it. But what I heard early on when Google launched, what Google Plus launched, was the tech media kind of, and, and some general folks, really denigrating Google, saying, well, this will never work because they keep failing at this. And my comment was, actually, I think that they're learning, and I think that's important. Uh, they are, they're learning, they're actually taking in our input, and it's worth noting that they did already own the second most popular social media site, YouTube. So they weren't a complete failure at this, they had something to work with. Uh, but I think it's just worth noting, I always like to talk about the fact that, you know, in whatever business you're in, failure is an important step to success sometimes. You have to kind of have that, that, that uh, attitude towards it. We're going to look at some of the features in Google+. Uh, there's the Google Bar, there's the Stream, Profile, Circles, Hangouts, which we mentioned a minute ago, Mobile Features. And, the, the, and we'll talk about those and break those down here a little bit in some screenshots and then in some live demo. Um, some of these phrases you've heard of or if you're using Google+, you, 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 you already are you familiar with some of these circles, for instance. Cir everything has an analog. If we think about uh, Facebook, uh, the plus one button, like button. Uh, circles, friends, but not entirely like friends. Uh, so we'll talk about the stream is the stream. It's, it's both, both of those, that's where you go and get what people are talking about. So this is, if you can make that out a little bit, this is what a typical main stream view page looks like when I jump, jump in. This is how it looks for Google+. Note, it looks in some ways like Facebook used to look uh, until they started playing with Timeline. Uh, but this actually shared, everybody's original comments was, it looks like Facebook. Uh, and I'll say this, it looks like Facebook, it acts like Twitter. And I think that's a key to understanding a little bit of, of this, why people are getting frustrated. They're getting on here and they're expecting it to behave like Facebook. Hey, I followed you. I'm sending you all this information and you're not responding because you're not following me. On Facebook, you're required to follow each other to make that connection. And we'll talk about that in a minute, about why this works differently. It's more on the, fa on the Twitter model where I can broadcast publicly and you're under no obligation to subscribe to me. You can to read what I have to say, but then I don't have to subscribe to you to reciprocate what you're saying. Uh, but so this kind of gives you a breakdown of what that page looks like, and we'll break it down into individual pieces. This is what we saw at the top of that page again. This is the Google navigation bar. And on here you have a variation of various different buttons, starting with the Google drop-down menu. How many people, by the way, have had, had, no, have had the Google drop-down menu installed on their, or added to their Google page? It's rolling out slowly. Not everybody's getting this. Right now, a lot of you are actually seeing a black bar across the screen with different links, Gmail, calendar, these different things, that's being phased out and uh, there's no particular rhyme or reason I'm understanding at this point of how it's happening. Some people are getting it, some aren't. But over time, everybody's going to have this, where instead of the black bar, you'll have this bar with the Google drop down. And so you click that and that's going to open up to your Google Mail, your Google Calendar, Google Apps, all these different things. So it's all accessible to you right there. The next series of buttons are pretty much how you get around inside Google+. And they represent uh, the stream, photos, your profile, circles, 
and games. And yes, Google Plus has games. Uh, they actually, Zynga works with them just like they do with Facebook. Uh, I don't know, I cannot honestly tell you if, if uh, Farmville is there, I don't know. Uh, happily, you can turn that all off if you're not interested and never see it, never be aware of it other than the fact that there's a button up there for it. Search bar here is for searching within Google Plus. Then you have this little box here which is usually red because there's notification waiting on you, but that's your notification box to tell you that you have messages waiting on you and it'll happily chime all day until you go in and open it and see what's going on and keep adding numbers to it depending on how many notifications you have. And then the avatar box over here uh, will get you to your profile settings and your privacy settings and the share button is available to you uh, so that you can type a status update on the fly no matter where you are. Because if you're on any Google product in the future, that bar will be at the top no matter where you are. So if you're on Gmail, Calendar, wherever, that bar will be at the top so you'll see the notification box, you'll be able to write a status message from anywhere you are in Google. You won't have to be in Google Plus to uh, use this. The next piece of the uh, site, of uh, the page, is this left sidebar. And it's kind of just kind of, it's, it's your way of just getting around inside the stream. You have the avatar page, the avatar here with a link to any pages, business pages that you're managing, right under it, and then the stream, and this is your stream management here, uh, and this is, uh, tells you how things are going to work out. You have your basic main stream with all the news of everybody posting, and then you can pick within your circles, I just want to see that, just the people in those circles posting. So I can pick for then and I have more hidden in there. I can check my notifications in here. What's hot, which is a new feature again, is kind of designed to help you discover uh, content of value to you. And then uh, what used to be called Sparks, when it first debuted, you may still hear people call it that, but really it's more of a, just a bookmark now. You do a search for a term, in this case Titanic, I was looking for Titanic information, who's posting online about Titanic, because one of our clients is uh, the Titanic Museum attraction up in Pigeon Forge. So I was curious to see if anybody on Google Plus was a Titanic fan for the movie or, or the, the historic event. And it saves that search for me over here so that anytime I want, now I go click on that button and my stream now becomes nothing but people talking about Titanic. And a great way for me to find uh, information uh, on a topic. And I've done others, Android, Tennessee, Knoxville, and it's depending on whatever I'm looking for if I just want to see what's going on. And there's also down here cut off uh, access to Google Chat. So you can do chat and load it up uh, right from there as well. In the middle of the page is the stream itself. And then what you have here, of course, and I think this is the fun one to really point out right away, is this little circle in line <coughs> right here. That's a volume button, that's a slider. You can actually, within your streams, determine how often you see and hear from certain groups of people based on your circles Now they're set up. This one is turned wide open. I said, I want everything from this group of people, anything they post, I want it. Send it to me. This is, uh, I think, my read daily list here is who I have. Uh, if I want a little less, I just move that. If I never want to see them, all the way to the other end, and I'll go looking for them on my own time. I may have added them to circles, but I don't want to see that in my general main stream. So I can actually set that. It's kind of an interesting feature to play with. Uh, of course, you have also your status bar where you enter your information. You can <coughs> upload a photo, video, web link, or a check-in location uh, for your, what you're doing. And then obviously here you have what people are posting in the stream. And you'll note here that uh, it notes if, it's been if you've plus one it. If you've plus one it, it's blue. Uh, then you can add your comments. You can share this within your stream. You can actually now actually launch a Hangout right from that comment as well. So if I want to do anything and get people to get online, hey, let's all talk about this. We can launch a video hangout straight from here and anybody who's interested can join in and we can actually talk by video about this topic. Uh, they're trying to encourage more of this as well. And then this tells you how many people have plus one it at this time. On the right hand sidebar, you would see this. Uh, this is basically your settings. This tells me what circle I'm looking at in the stream and gives me a chance to see who all is in that stream. Oh, and, uh, I thought I saw Jeremy's picture in there somewhere. But anyway, so these are the people I'm reading daily. Uh, if I want to add new people circle, I just type right in there. Uh, I can share a circle. If I want people to see this, hey, this is a really, I've created, I've curated an, inter an interesting circle. I'd like for you all to see this. I can click share. It publishes the circle, the members of the circle in a little uh, 
post and we'll show how that works and we'll go live. Uh, but it lets people see that and then they can actually choose to download that circle and add it to their followers as well. Or they can pick and choose from within there, hey, I'd like to follow those people. Uh, they never know the name I've given the circle, by the way. So I can name it whatever I want. Uh, all they see is who's in it. Uh, and then here's your Hangout Launch button right here. So you can just start a Hangout from right there and you can pick individuals, you can pick circles, you can just make it public and say, anybody who wants to join me, come on in. Uh, we, I'm ready to talk. Inside the profile, you have a couple of different pages that are worth noting. We're going to talk about two, posts and about. And then the other is kind of self-explanatory, photos, videos, and plus ones. But we'll talk about posts first. This is when your main profile page. This shows everything you've posted. When you're looking at it, you'll see everything you've posted. Somebody else is visiting, they're only going to see information based on the level of access you've given them. If you've posted it publicly and they have circled you, they will see this. If you have posted it to a circle they belong to, they will see this. If you have posted it privately to someone else who they do not have access to that, that group, it doesn't exist. It just goes to the next publicly available one for that person to see. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about Google Plus in the long term is the ability to filter who gets messages. And we'll talk about that when we do the live uh, uh, demonstration here. You can choose to send me a message. You can just click this button and it'll email me to my Gmail account. They never see my Gmail address, but it sends me the Gmail account and I get that. You can also send me the email here. The plus ones, it stores for me, for my viewing, everything I've plus one everything. So any comment that I've plus one, any post that I've plus one, if I want to go back later, it serves essentially as a bookmark for me. So I said, oh, I, plus, I, you know, I hit plus one on this great story somebody posted the other day. I can actually go into my plus ones and see that. Now, if it's a plus one I've publicly shared, anybody that I've given public access to can also see some of those. Videos is any videos I've uploaded to, my, to the, uh, the stream and any photos I've uh, uploaded to the stream. But basically, this is, this is basically the, a stream that's just me and just what I am. And again, if you're visiting it, you might see something slightly different depending on how many circles, if I have you in my circles, what access I've given you. And then this tells you who's in my circles, how many people I've circled, etc. And you can change some of those settings so that you can hide that information if you so desire. The about screen is the next one over. Everything stays at the top up here, uh, but now we have the bio, and we'll show you a lengthier version of it. I actually have such a long bio, I couldn't show you this <laughs> whole thing on the screenshot. Um, it's like 400 words, it's crazy. Uh, I got so excited because you know, on Twitter, your bio is 160 characters. That's it. And on Google, you can run wild, and I did. Uh, so uh, I've been tweaking this for over time, but we'll show you how this works. And under that is interesting information. I can share my work history. I can share uh, where I've lived, you know, different cities and states where I've lived, all this sort of information. So it kind of becomes a nice living profile for, you know, who I am, find, best ways to find me, as well as I created the, you can create this list of other places you can find me online. And, don't be upset if you don't have that many. That's crazy, okay? <laughs> That's nuts. But uh, I use a lot of things. I'm a magpie and I try out a lot of things. So I, but I said, oh, here's where you can find me. You want to find me on Facebook? There's my Facebook link. I think sharing your Facebook link on Google Plus probably violates some sort of just law and order situation, but it's there. Uh, interestingly enough, Facebook won't let me do the reverse. Um, I, my Spotify account, my Foursquare, wherever you want, my Pinterest account right here. Is, uh, you can find me there. You can find me on that. See what I'm pinning these days. You can uh, check that out. Circles is the next major section. This is a little bit of how Circles works. Uh, and again, it makes more sense when we do the live, but just kind of give you a feel for it again. Notice that the bar stays at the top wherever we go. And then this lets me sort circles. Who all, all these people that you're seeing here are in my circles. I've added them. I've said I want to get your information for some reason or another. And I will point out this, this is just something that makes me happy for no apparent reason, but it, the, the librarian who lives inside my soul gets very excited by this. You can sort them by last name. Every other social network sorts everybody by first name and it makes me crazy. Uh, I try to search for my family and I, they're not together. Uh, <laughs> they're all by first name scattered all over the place. So you can actually sort by last name. That just makes me happy. I like to share that little bit of information for you. If you, if you have that little librarian in your soul too, uh, Mary, uh, <laughs> you, you, this, this will make you happy. You can actually sort your people. You can sort, actually it does offer me the option to sort by first name if I've just gotten so used to it, I can do that. But I like to sort by last name. Uh, then it's simply a matter of these people are in my circles. Then I have down here a list of circles and it's quite literally drag and drop. Click Paul Adams here, 
and put them in whatever circle I want and he's automatically added. Uh, and so I can do that. The, you can see here it's a mix of people and brands. They all put them together here, the little profile tabs. I can click a profile tab and it's going to open up for me and show me that account's profile page and I can learn a little bit more about them. And as we mentioned, Circles is really, that's the basic organizing tool here. It's, it's, the, it's the engine that kind of drives Google Plus uh, that you're looking at. Uh, you can create Circles. It's a, they're essentially lists. Think of them that way. Uh, you create your own lists based on whatever interest and topic you have. Family, friends, coworkers, you know, people who collect Star Wars, tall action figures, you know, whatever it is you want to do. And you create these circles, and then that determines the information you're going to send out uh, to the world to broadcast. Uh, for your sharing preferences. And you can choose which circles receive the content you share. This is the frustrating point for people, I think, on other, when they're using other networks. You broadcast it, it goes out. You don't always get the easy chance to say, I would just like my family to see this, please. Or just my coworkers to see this, please, not the clients. Uh, and so this is a way to do it. You can actually say, I want just my coworkers to see this and they will receive it and no one else gets it. I can also turn off sharing at that point. Uh, by turning off sharing means that my coworkers may receive that information, but they cannot forward it to anybody. So it, the privacy controls here are pretty interesting because now I can begin to segregate who gets my information. When I post it on Facebook, in theory I can say just my you know, high school alumni friends get this, I can post it to their list, but in reality, Everybody can see it. Uh, and so anybody that's friends with me on Facebook can see that. So this actually works a lot better, I think. You're currently limited to 5,000 people across all of your circles combined. But that's fine for me. I don't know why I'd want to know more than 5,000 people. There are people squawking to have this number changed, and it probably will at some point, but this is a good starting point. That means, you know, you can have 5,000 circles and have one person in each circle and, and a different person in each circle. That's nutty, but you can do it. Uh, you, <laughs> or you can have 5,000 people and divide them amongst 10 circles, and there's one circle with 5,000 people in it, one circle with 100 people in it. As long as you don't have more than 5,000 individuals, you're okay. And your circle names are known only to you. I have a habit of naming my circles a little quirky to space on my personal humor. Uh, and so it's best probably that some people don't know what my circle names are at times. You may be the same way. Don't worry, even when you share a circle, they don't know. Is it something akin like the Skype name? Uh, no, it's just whatever. I, I may call it, I can call it family. I can call it uh, people who make me crazy. Uh, and, I, and if I share that circle, all they know is they're in it. They don't know what circle I've put them in. So that, that's an option for you. You're already thinking about some people and how you want to do this, right? They can live in multiple circles, yeah? They can live in multiple circles. You can have them in all kinds. I've got some people that are in way too many circles. Uh, but that, I want them to get different information based on what I'm sending out. And that gets us into a little bit about how the sharing here works. Uh, the fancy word is asymmetrical sharing. Uh, basically what's happening here is that in Facebook, it's symmetrical. <coughs> we cannot share unless we are friends. You agree to be my friend, I agree to be your friend, and we share contact, content. In theory, you and I are only people seeing that, except for, you know, the fact that I am friends with, you know, 1,100 other people. They're also seeing that, but you've agreed to also receive that information. Google works more similarly to, Facebook, to Twitter, as I mentioned. You can share it with anyone if they're in your circle. They do not have to add you to their circle to send you information. They, if they don't want you to see it, they don't put you in a circle and it, it stays, it's a one-way street for communication that way. So if you're familiar with and comfortable with Twitter, I, you'll find that you'll become comfortable quicker here with, with uh, Google+. Everybody already know, it's on Facebook and Twitter. Do I really need to add Google to my business communications? Probably not, maybe not. Uh, quite honestly, it's still early days. Uh, but I think that there's a big yet to add to that. Uh, I think it's worth getting on there and exploring it, getting used to it, because here's a little secret. The biggest website on the internet is Google, the search engine. Next biggest, YouTube. You know, these are things, these are the tools that what you're having. Google Plus is going to blend all these together and make, take advantage of that. People spend most of their time on the internet on Google products. So having access to that, that client base over time, I think Google Plus is going to grow and become more uh, important in how social works. 
Particularly, uh, we'll talk about internal communications here with Google Plus real quick. Uh, we already talked about Hangouts and the free video conferencing opportunities that they offer. Messenger, which we haven't talked about yet, is the mobile version. When you have your mobile app up, you can actually up up upload at Messenger, and Messenger lets you do group texting. So that all of you get the text together, all of you see all the replies together. You've got employees in the field, you know, you're working, they're working the project. They've got their phones or their, their tablets. You can do Messenger and stay in touch with where they are, get progress reports, updates, changes of scheduling, whatever's going on. Free, again, as a, as a tool for you to use. Uh, you have controlled sharing of information, like I said, to employees and to groups. Integration with Google Documents. If you're using Google Docs, you can blend those right into Google Plus, and over time, it's going to become even more blended in. And then there will be continued integration with the other Google tools, as I've mentioned. Those are all great internal tools that you can start using right now. Even if you're not thinking about how can I use Google right now to sell to people, to reach customers, you can start thinking with how can I use Google Plus to improve the way we communicate internally. I think there's some really great opportunities here for you to work with this because, again, these tools are free. You can buy Yammer and a premium account for that or a premium account for some of these other GoToMeeting and these other things. Or you can start by dipping your toe in with Google Plus and taking advantage of what they've got there. Externally, you still have some opportunities. Some companies are doing some really cool things with Hangouts. Dell uses Hangouts for customer service days where they will invite customers who are having problems with their Dell computers to come in and join them in a Hangout. I don't know if you're having a problem with your computer, how you get into the Hangout, but, uh, <laughs> but they will do customer service opportunities. Uh, where they will talk to a Dell representative in a groups of people uh, on, on these video chats. You can do them for product launching. Uh, focus groups, uh, I think, are an interesting way of doing this. And just keeping up with your customers. One thing that's really interesting is you can filter with this highly influential customers. So that right now when you're posting on your Facebook page or your Twitter account, you're sending out to all of your customers. But you may have figured out over time that there are some customers who are more responsive than others and who are going to help you more getting your content out there. You can put them in a special circle and get information just to them. You can get them in your Hangouts. You can uh, take care of these uh, them that way. Social search is the big tool to keep watching for. I think social search is going to change uh, the way we, we, we handle search engine optimization, the way we handle SEO. Uh, the, it's no longer relying on purely the, the old tools of inbound links, keyword, density, these sorts of things. You're adding in a very important layer. How do other people talk about you or your product online? It's no longer important that you be online as much as it is, it's important that your customers be talking about you online. So it's not enough just to have an account, to have a Facebook page or a Google page. You need to be inspiring your customers to talk about you, to share information about you, to interact with you. Uh, you can't just be posting any more coupons and, and, and saying, well, we're online. We're doing, we're doing that thing. We've got them. You've got to get the conversation going. The more conversations taking place, the higher you're going to rank in people's search results because search results through Google are going to be personalized now in, as we move on into the future based on your connections in social media. So that the more your friends are talking about the library uh, and say the, the uh, Barbara King Solver event coming up. Not a library event, a leaf event. Oh, that's right, a leaf event. But let's say, well, let's say the, uh, you're, you've blended them all in my head. But so let's talk about the Barbara King Solver event at the Bijou. The more people are talking about that on social media, now if I'm searching for information on Barbara King Solver or mountaintop removal or any of these topics, the more my friends are talking about that event in social media, it's pushing that event up higher in the search results for me. And so it's important that you are engaging your audience. It's not important as much that you're talking as is that your audience is talking about you. Which actually gets to the question, is Google a Facebook killer? And I always say no. I always said no from the very first day. Google was never intended to be a Facebook killer. Uh, Google is going to change Facebook, though. What they want to do is change Facebook's closed sharing. Right now, Facebook lives kind of in its own little wall. You can't search from Google and find out what's being talked about inside Facebook. Google's trying to force that hand with search plus your world, the social search, so that Facebook would open up so that people can search. What are you talking about? What are, you, what are your status updates? What are you recommending on Facebook? Because they want to bring in all of those. They want to bring Twitter back into the fold. The more information, the more data they have, because that's what Google is in its heart, is a data company. 
uh, they, the more data they have, the more effective their search tools become, and that's really what this all leads to for them. Can you clarify that again? Sure. The sharing model, well, Facebook right, so it lives as a walled garden, essentially. It, it's its own thing. You can't search, like you can't type in Google and say, uh, Barbara King Solver, and find what people in Facebook are talking about Barbara King Solver. Uh, it, because Facebook hides that. You can't get past certain privacy levels. What they're wanting to do is say, open that up. Let people search the status update so we can see who's talking about, who's recommending, who's doing these things. Within still keeping certain privacy rules intact, but to be able to say the content that people are sharing online, you can't search it right now on Facebook, uh, from, from outside of Facebook. Yeah, legitimately it is. Because there's no way for you to say, like if you create a Facebook profile, mm -hmm. you can actually say this is completely private, you can't put me into a Google search or a search engine and be able to find me. And, that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Google Plus doesn't have that. No, Google Plus does. You can actually go into your Google Plus privacy settings and turn off what's available to the search engine to see. And you can also download and remove from Google Plus content you no longer want found walk them through that. You can also turn on, hello Andrew. Hey. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. How about yourself? Just dandy. I want to thank you for being a part of it. I'm going to turn this around, maybe, and let you maybe see some people. I don't know. Can you see anybody? Yep, hello. <laughs> Andrew, we're talking about Hangouts. And, uh, just thought, uh, thought we'd give them a chance to see how one works. Uh, do you, you use them some in, in your work, don't you? Yes, actually, uh, since I'm a mobile developer, uh, being what I do, uh, some conferences and other developers are spread throughout the country. So the easiest way to communicate is through video chat. So using Hangouts is a great way to communicate with them and keep up with where we are and what tools we have. Fantastic. What what are some of the ways that you you've been using Google Plus with your your business? You do you do development, uh, app yeah. development. What are some of the ways that you've been using Google Plus uh, for your business? Uh, to connect with other developers, uh, find out more information. There's a weekly tech one that uh, put on by uh, Carl Hugh that is pretty informative and a great way to learn uh, about what's going on. Yeah, I've, uh, Carl is another guy we're waiting on, hopefully he'll join us, but Carl hosts a weekly hangout. He's here in Knoxville like Andrew is, uh, and Carl hosts a weekly hangout for tech uh, people, just kind of get a sense of what, uh, what's being discussed. He has, he's had people from Google uh, as guests where he interviews them as part of the Hangouts and then everybody gets a chance to ask questions and, and hear about what's going on. Uh, that's that's a, a, a great way I've found that, uh, that Google Plus is working, just purely for that networking capability. Uh, any, anything else, Andrew? No, it's uh, a great tool and there's a collaboration tool that can built into it to screen share. So, or uh, anything technical, if you've got a like, presentation you want to share across uh, and you can't get everyone in the same room, this is a great tool. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you dropping in on us. Well, thanks for having me. All righty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hang up the hangout. How's that? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. See you. See you. No, Shane, you mentioned uh, in hangout. Does it have the features like go to meeting and log me in? Uh, what kind of features are you looking for? Like log me in, remote access to your computer. You can do you can do screen share. Yes, you can get in and, and show people what's on your your desktop and and go through that. You can actually one of the nice one of the interesting features with with Hangouts as well is you can choose to actually say you have because they're so integrated with YouTube, another Google property. Uh, you can actually show a YouTube video in a hangout.
and have other people watch it with you and then you're doing some commentary talking about it. There's a group of people who have been doing that, kind of actually forming an odd little movie discussion group uh, where they're actually showing just snippets of movies and talking about them as they watch them. But you can actually share that video and everybody can see it simultaneously through the Hangout and then discuss. You can do document sharing. So if you're using Google Docs, you just grab those documents, put them up on the screen. Everybody can see them and work with them. Uh, there are other tools that are being added and folded in as we go with that. But uh, Google Hangouts is, I think, it's one of those interesting little tools. When uh, Mark Schaefer uh, here in town uh, did a blog post uh, last year talking, he interviewed a group of teenagers about the features they'd love to see on the Facebook of the future. And I couldn't help but notice that all the features they described were on Google+. Plus. They wanted video chat. They wanted to be able to text message through the social network. They wanted to be able to do video status updates. They wanted to share documents in their screens. They wanted to be able to share music. That all is going to be is happening now in some degree in Google Plus uh, and with Google Music. Uh, I think that's actually coming now. You can actually play some music straight through your feed uh, so people can click on it and, and, and hear it. Um, so you have that ability uh, to do that. Hey, look at there. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, it's odd to see that while I'm talking about it. The, uh, but so Google Hangouts, I think, is like really one of those great secret weapons. Another great secret weapon is we, I alluded to it a moment ago with a privacy question. There's a tool called Takeout. Uh, and what it is, is uh, it started by a group in the Google team called the Data Liberation Front, is how they name themselves. Uh, and what they do is they're all about figuring out how to improve privacy standards. And the whole thing is when you, when you go to the takeout tool, you can specify which Google products you would like to have your data information removed from. And what they do is they let you download it into a file that you can put on a disk and do whatever you want with. If you want to use it and share it with another network, if you want to take all your photos off Picasso, you can do that. If you want to do whatever it is you're wanting to do, your videos off YouTube, your plus ones off of Google, Google Plus, you download this through Takeout. And what makes that so fun is, is uh, I think, challenging to the Google people, is they said, we wanted to make it easy for you to leave so that we have to work harder to make you stay. No other network is promising that where you, you can't call Facebook and say, take everything off Facebook. I don't want to be there anymore. If you've tried to kill a Facebook account, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That data lives on the Facebook servers forever. With, the de with takeout and the data liberation front, they're saying, okay, that's what you want, here it is, and we're gonna hand it to you in a package that you can now transport to any other social network you want and upload it there if you so choose. Uh, so they're really experimenting with the whole idea. What Google Plus is all about in the long run here is what they're really looking for is the opportunity to make sharing as seamless and as universal as possible. Now what? Oh, our friend. Awesome. No, he's in my daily reads. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Colbert. Um, so, but yeah, the, the idea is that sharing should be seamless, as seamless and universal as possible. No matter where you are on the web, they want to make it easy for you to see information and share that content with somebody. So if you integrate that with as many different Google tools as you can, hopefully over time, you integrate that with other websites as well, other networks. The plus one button is gathering great analytics. You can actually look at those analytics and see who is uh, sharing information. Let's look and see, by the way, at the Colbert while we're talking about him. This is an easier one, there's not as many, but we'll do this. I mentioned ripples a minute ago. You go to this little side button, when you see something's been shared, you can actually go to this uh, button and click view ripples. And ripples is a visual way of presenting information about who is sharing content. So that you can actually see this particular post by the Colbert Report which currently has only been shared by these three people publicly in the last few minutes. And over time, you can actually get a timeline view where you will see all these dots adding as more and more content is shared. The size of the dot indicates the relative size of the audience of people seeing this content based on. You can collect this information. It gives you a timeline. That you can actually do an animation right here. You can show it. And it, will, it doesn't show private shares, only public shares. But you can actually get a sense of what time of day are people most likely to share your information, who is most likely to share your information, and you start to get a sense of who are your best.
best influencers within your audience. So as you get information that's being shared, you can actually go watch this and see how it plays out. It's a fascinating tool, I think, just to give you some visual learning of, of finding out the analytics of who is your audience and how are they using your content.